Okay, hi guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna be covering how to increase the number of witnesses for your helium miner setup. Now, if you like my videos on helium, then please do the usual like, subscribe, and notifications for more videos. Now, when we're talking about improving the witnesses, I'm sure you know there's a number of upgrades that you can do to your setup to improve the number of witnesses. In this video, I'm gonna cover a small amount of technical detail as to how the LoRa WAN works for helium. The idea being that you can get a, a more informed decision when you're making these upgrades as to whether it's worth the while which ones to choose over others so that you know the reason why you're making the choice and make the better choice for you. Now I'm going to do this with a bit of an old-fashioned whiteboard, so uh, stay tuned. When we look at Lower R1 for helium, we first need to look at signal and noise and the way the technology works. Signal or receive signal strength indication RSSI on this axis across a frequency range on this axis. We have noise here, which tends to be a similar signal level across the frequency range we're looking at. Now in a basic way, if we had a power transmission coming in from a beacon, say, it might look like this. The problem is that if some interference comes along, it could completely take out our signal. So to combat this, we spread our signal over a much wider frequency range. So if that interference comes along again, it's no big deal, because that portion of the signal can be recovered with the use of digital forward error correction techniques. Using these techniques, we can receive and decode signals considerably smaller than the background noise levels. If we zoom in on that chart a bit, still with RSSI versus frequency, we would have the noise kind of higher up here, and we can get away with a signal much lower. So if we look at the signal to noise, we have the noise here and the signal here, we can see the signal is much lower than the noise, hence a negative signal to noise ratio. You can see here from the previous chart had signal there and noise there, hence a positive signal to noise ratio. Now how much smaller this signal can be relative to the noise depends on what's called the spreading factor. The spreading factor is the amount by which we spread the signal over this frequency range. Now this spreading factor can be variable. The main one used in lower R1 for a beacon is spreading factor 12. We also use spreading factor 7. Now the different spreading factors affect the area of coverage due to the way the receiver works. It changes the receiver's receive sensitivity. For example, for spreading factor 12, we have a receive sensitivity of about minus 137 dBm. And for spreading factor 7, I think it's about neg 123 dBm. So spreading factor 7 means we don't spread it as much. Maybe something like this. Now the benefits of that larger spreading factor are a larger area of coverage because of that better received sensitivity. But the downside is that the data rate is a lot smaller. You can send a lot less information for a given amount of time. On the other hand, spreading factor 7 there gets you a higher data rate, but at the expense of lower coverage area, again because of that lower received sensitivity. So what does this have to do with getting more witnesses and earning more HNT then? Well, as an example, let's say we had a miner here, another one over here, and perhaps a third one over here as well. Now what you find with this technology is that the transmit or downlink coverage is pretty much limited, particularly because of POC version 11. And that's because the transmit coverage of the antenna of the miner is limited. If you have a higher gain antenna, the miner will implement power control to reduce the power and limit the EIRP, the effective isotropic radiated power. The receive or uplink coverage is not the same. The receive coverage tends to be considerably greater. So for example, let's say the pink was the receive or uplink coverage. And again, as I said, that's the transmit coverage or downlink. So let's say in these examples, that's the receive coverage of this miner, miner number one. And the receiving coverage of this miner is much bigger, maybe something like that. So that's the receive coverage of miner number two. Well, in this instance, we can see there's an element of overlapping coverage. We can see in this area that miner number one's transmit coverage for its beacon overlap minus number two receiving coverage. 
So as a result, miner number two is a witness to miner number one's beacon. So he sends out a beacon, and he's a witness to it. However, this area of receive coverage does not overlap this transmit coverage, so miner number one is not a witness to miner number two. As for this guy, maybe he's got a smaller antenna or something, so the area of transmit coverage is a lot smaller. And maybe he's not got as good a receiver as well or something, so the receive coverage is only that much. Now here we can see there is no overlap in transmit coverage and no overlap in receive coverage either, so there is nothing there. So neither of these will be witnesses to each other's beacons. So how do we go about improving this? Say for example miner number one, how can we improve this guy's performance by getting it more witnesses and as a result earning more HNT? Well to do this we need to go back and look at the spreading factor things again. Spreading factor 12 for example if you remember had a receive sensitivity of minus 137 dBm. Now what we find is that the SNR we can get away with, remember signal lower than noise, the SNR of this spreading factor is about minus 20 dB. That is, the signal is lower than the noise by 20 dB, and can still be received and decoded. Now what's quite important, the reason that minor number 2 here and minor number 3 are not witnesses to each other to this one, is because each one's SNR is below minus 20 dB. So if for example minor number 1 wants to be a witness to minor number 2's beacon, then what we're actually wanting to do is increase the area of this guy's receive coverage such that now there is an overlap. That is, minor number two's beacon is overlapped by minor number one's receive coverage. Likewise for this guy here, minor number three, we want to increase the receive coverage of this guy, minor number one, such that now we have another area of overlap between the beacon and its witness. So then, we have this guy, miner number one, is now a witness to both miner number two's beacon and miner number three's beacon. So if this is all about the receive coverage areas then, we need to increase the SNR. So how do we go about doing that? Well, that's simply a case of either increasing the receive signal, or reducing the noise, or both. When we consider noise, we need to have a look at a bit of a matrix. In this chart, we have signal to noise ratio versus signal RSSI. Let's have the RSSI range from, say, minus 80 dBm to minus 140 dBm, and the SNR from plus 10 dB to minus 20 dB. What we find is that there are four distinct areas. This area is where you have good SNR and good coverage. This one, you have good SNR but poor coverage. This one you have good coverage but poor SNR, and finally this one you have poor coverage and poor SNR. So what causes these specific areas then? In general we find that good SNR, good signal, that's because you're close to other miners. Poor coverage, good SNR, that's because there's no interference, no other miners around basically. Poor coverage and poor SNR, that occurs at the cell edge, no other coverage or miners. And finally, the worst case scenario, good coverage, poor SNR. The main reason for this is simply interference. So is there any way we can improve these circumstances? Do we even need to? Well, this area of good SNR, good signal, we can't really influence this, so that's okay. The poor coverage, good SNR, we don't need to do anything really. The SNR is good. Poor coverage, poor SNR. Can we do anything? Yes, we can. We can have a better antenna, higher gain perhaps, even a directional one. We can have an LNA, a low noise amplifier. And we can maybe have better cables. The good coverage, poor SNR. As to interference here then, what causes that? Well, IoT is an unlicensed band, so other IoT tech use it, lots of other tech do use it. The interference can be temporary, permanent, it can come from anything. 
And one thing I would mention is that there are other circumstances that add to this kind of matrix and the different circumstances. But again, I'm only covering the main things going on here. Um, particularly of interest is the fact that there are hardware problems with your setup that could also suggest these things. And I might cover those in a different video. So is there anything we can do to improve that? Well, the primary thing to reduce interference is to use a bandpass filter. You'll probably have heard of a saw or cavity filters. Cavity are much better, but they're way more expensive. So if you get yourself a better antenna, an LNA, a filter, better cables, etc. How does that impact our diagram from before? Where we had our signal there and our noise there. Not very good SNR. Well, by adding a bandpass filter, this noise gets reduced to say about there and our signal coming from that better antenna and LNA or whatever, the signal gets higher. And therefore this time, the noise and the signal, so the SNR is massively improved. So if before you couldn't receive or decode a beacon as its SNR was below neg 20 dB, then with these changes, you will. So how does this improve our example from before? Well, if we have another quick look, we had our transmit or downlink coverage from minor one, something like this. And we had our receiving coverage, something like this. And then we had minor number two with its transmit coverage, something like that. And its receiving coverage, something like this. And then we had minor number three with its transmit coverage, something like that. And its receive coverage, something like this. And if you remember this overlapping coverage here, minor number two's receive coverage overlaps minor number one's transmit coverage, and therefore minor number two is a witness to minor number one's beacon. However, minor number one's receive coverage does not overlap minor number two's transmit beacon coverage, and therefore is not a witness. It's also not a witness to minor number three, as there's no overlapping coverage at all, transmit or receive. Now when we add the likes of the LNA, the filter, the better cables and antenna etc, then the situation changes, such that the receive coverage is greater, as we can see here. So now we do have overlapping coverage between minor number one's receive and minor number two's transmit beacon, and also a tiny overlap between minor number three's downlink transmit coverage and minor number one's receive coverage. And so now, minor number one is a witness to minor number three's beacon. And it's also a witness to minor number two's beacon. And so, as a result of all this, we now have two more witnesses. That's how we earn more HNT. So how do we do these changes physically? Well, maybe originally we had our minor here, perhaps a sends cap in one. We'd have a big long cable to a small antenna. But to improve matters, the first thing we'd do is stick a bigger antenna, which gives you better transmit and also better receive. Then we'd add in our filter, which could be a saw one or the cavity, as I said. So that reduces the noise, as we saw there. Then we'd add in our amplifier. You'd also need the bias T as well. Bias T is simply providing a 12 volt DC supply to our amplifier along the same cable as your RF. And then the next stage, it's not particularly well shown here, but you'd move your minor to there. All as close as each other, less cables, less loss. So by doing this, the signal goes up, noise goes down, signal goes up, reduced cables means that the noise goes down, and as a result of all this, your signal to noise is much, much better. Okay, thanks guys. I hope you found that useful and interesting. And uh, please do the usual subscribe and like and all that. And I'll check you out next time.